This is a revision video about the brain and the central nervous system, which comes up in the homeostasis and response part of AQA GCC biology. By the end of this video, you should be able to locate specific regions of the brain and describe what their functions are, describe how neuroscientists have been able to map the regions of the brain to these particular functions, and explain some of the difficulties of investigating brain function and how to treat brain damage and disease. The brain is the organ responsible for controlling complex behaviour. It's made up of billions of interconnected neurons and it has different regions that each carry out different functions. Together with the spine, the brain makes up the central nervous system or CNS. There are three parts of the brain that you need to be able to name for this part of the GCSE, but elsewhere in the homeostasis and response unit there are a further two that you need to know about, so here we're just going to look at all five of them. The whole of the part that you probably think of as the brain is called the cerebrum, and the outermost layer of this, which is highly folded, is referred to as the cerebral cortex or sometimes the cerebral mantle. Underneath the cerebrum, near to the brainstem, there's another major structure in the hindbrain, which is called the cerebellum. And then slightly below this and in front of this, there's a long stem-like structure which makes up part of the brainstem, and this is called the medulla oblongata, or just medulla for short. Slightly higher up, we've also got the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. You need to be able to describe the function of each of these five parts. The cerebral cortex controls all of the things that you might think of as making us human. Our consciousness, our intelligence, our memory and our language. The cerebellum is a little bit more mundane. It coordinates the muscles necessary for all voluntary movement, so things like walking or throwing a ball. The medulla is responsible for involuntary movements, so things like your heart beating and your lungs breathing. The pituitary gland is a master gland. That means it acts as a coordination centre and it causes a cascade of other hormones to respond to changes in the environment. And then the hypothalamus has a whole range of functions, but the one that you do need to know about for GCSE biology is that it's the site of the thermoregulatory centre, which, as the name suggests, is responsible for controlling your body temperature. If you're sitting the higher tier of GCSE biology, then you don't just need to know what the functions are, you also need to know how scientists found out what they were. There are three key techniques that scientists have used to study the parts of the brain and what their functions are. The first one is MRI scanning, or magnetic resonance imaging scanning. MRI scans use really strong magnets together with radio waves to build up very detailed pictures of brain activity. MRI scans don't just show us what's there and what's not, like an x-ray, they can also show us which part of the brain is active at any one time. So for instance, you can show somebody a picture and then look at which part of their brain is currently active to work out which part of the brain is involved in image processing. Another advantage of MRI scans is that unlike x-rays, they don't involve ionising radiation, so it's much safer. The second technique that scientists use for assigning functions to parts of the brain is studying patients who've had brain damage. Say somebody's been in a traffic accident and they've lost their memory, it might be possible to look at their brain and see which part has been damaged and then say, well, that's probably to do with dealing with memories. The third thing that we can do is electrically stimulate parts of the brain and see what happens. It won't come as a surprise to hear that studying the function of the brain and treating people with brain disorders has been much more challenging than studying the function of the heart or the lungs or the pancreas. While patients with brain damage have allowed us to draw many conclusions about the function of specific areas, a lot of people won't just have had damage to one tiny isolated area, and this makes it difficult to pin down exactly what is causing the symptoms that they experience. It's also a little bit ethically murky to do something to somebody's brain if you don't know exactly what the outcome will be. But unlike many organs of the body, we can't really perform experiments on the organs of people who died, because if somebody's died, then we won't know what the impact of anything we do to their brain is, unless it's causing a motor response like contracting a muscle. The brain is also pretty tricky to access in the first place. You literally have a big piece of bone there to stop anything getting in, and the skull does its job pretty well, and this also prevents some imaging techniques from working very well. Many of the functions of the brain involve the coordination of several different parts, and this can make it hard to pin down exactly what's going on and which part of the brain is responsible for a particular function, even now that we can use MRI scans. Finally, when the brain does malfunction, there are a huge range of things that could be wrong, ranging from infection to tumours to trauma or even biochemistry. 
The same symptoms can be caused by anything from a bacterial disease to a bump on the head to your body not making enough of a particular hormone and causing some kind of mental health issue. People suffering from disorders of the brain and the spinal column can be treated in a number of ways, and these include the removal of tumours, draining of excess fluid, insertion of implants, and also the use of drugs. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you found this a useful introduction to the brain for GCSE Biology. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe below for more GCSE Biology videos coming soon.